Hi, my name's Mike Waters with SOR Controls Group. I want to talk to you today about one of the products that's manufactured under our sensor sampling system brand. Through sensor sampling systems, we manufacture systems that are designed to remove samples from a process without allowing emissions that would be harmful to either the operator or the environment to escape as a part of the sample extraction process. Today, we're going to talk about our basic bottle sampling system, the model BBSS, that's designed to take samples of liquids for which the process is operating at a relatively low pressure. And by low pressure, we're talking about around 150 PSI or less. So for low pressure liquid sampling, typically we're sampling into a sample bottle. Now the bottle for our systems can be of any size, any geometry. We will custom machine the shroud so that it fits your bottle. This particular one is a Boston round bottle. So the sample is injected into the bottle via one of the sample needles here on the injector assembly. The longer needle is the process needle. The shorter needle is the vent needle that allows the vapors to escape from the bottle as the sample is filling the bottle. So when the operator is ready to take a sample, they'll put the bottle on the system. Those needles will pierce what's called a septa. The septa is a Teflon coated rubber which is self-healing. And what we mean by self-healing is as the needle is extracted, the Teflon will close up to reseal the bottle to prevent the vapors from escaping. So as the bottle is installed, through the process needle, the sample is injected, the vapors inside the bottle escape through the vent needle, and the operator will have visual indication looking through the bottle and will manually control the sampling process. Now let's take a look at how that system works. Okay, so first let's take a look at the flow diagram for the BBSS. And remember, all of the systems available from sensor sampling system are designed to produce a representative sample. And the way we do that is we guarantee we always have flow through the sample valve. So at any time, there is no dead volume trapped in the system which would contaminate between samples. So our system is typically going to be set up on a bypass line from the main process line, but we're going to be continuously flowing through the sample valve. And we'll take a look and see what that looks like on the panel in a moment. But we're flowing continuously through the sample valve. When the operator is ready to take a sample and he's installed the sample bottle, as I showed you a moment ago, then he will operate that single valve on the front, will open it up. That will now allow the sample to flow in and down through the process needle into the bottle. And as I told you before, the vapor then will escape through that vent needle and the vent line is typically tied to the flare header system within a plant. Uh, we can also provide some accommodation for facilities that do not have a flare connection available, but most commonly that's going to be tied to the flare line. When the operator observes that they have achieved the desired amount of sample, then they'll close that valve. We continue to flow through the system, always a representative sample, and now we have we have collected our sample in the bottle. Now, one of the things that was problematic for previous systems is oftentimes an amount of product would be trapped within the process needle. You can kind of think of it like vapor lock when you put your thumb over the end of a straw when it's in a, a soda or a, or a glass of water and you pull it up, there's amount of liquid trapped within that straw from the vapor lock. The same thing happens with the process needle. So we designed a means by which you could expel that remaining amount of sample from the process needle into the bottle and that's what we call our sensor needle purge. So after the sample has been collected, we have a nitrogen supply line connected through the regulator, through a rotomator, rotometer to indicate flow, through a check valve. That nitrogen supply now takes over blows down through the process needle, and I'm going to show you a cutaway of exactly how that works in a moment, blows down through the process needle 
and expels any remaining sample from the processed needle and guarantees that you have no cross-contamination or no possibility for plugging the needle and thereby uh, creating a maintenance problem for the sample system itself. Okay, so let's take a look at the sample valve itself. This is really the heart of the basic bottle sampling system. This is the valve assembly. This is the needle injector assembly. And I have here a cutaway of how that valve works. So remember, we're continuously flowing through the half inch port, through the main body port of the valve. When the operator is ready to take a sample, they're gonna turn the handle and that's gonna retract the needle from this little side port here. And this is a specially designed sample valve. This is not an off the shelf needle valve. So that, that valve stem, that's a ceramic ball on the tip. And when that valve is closed, the ceramic ball, because it is harder than the surrounding metal, it has the same sealing properties as a soft seated valve, but there is no soft seat inside the valve. So it contributes to very long life and is able to withstand a lot of wear. But when that valve is open, now we open that side port and process can flow through the side port, down through the process needle into the bottle. And remember we said the vapor inside the bottle is now gonna escape through the vent needle and that vapor vent is typically gonna be tied to the flare header system. So you can see inside the body of the valve, here is the process needle, here is the vent needle, and remember we talked about the needle purge. So when that valve is closed, now the nitrogen pressure will, will be higher than the resulting pressure in the system, so it'll pass through the check valve and that nitrogen will expel any product trapped within the cavity, down through the process needle, into the sample bottle. And then of course, if it's left on, then you're just passing nitrogen through the system that'll escape through the vapor vent. So we've guaranteed that between sampling operations, you have a clean, non-plugged process needle and you have an inert environment in the body of that bottle. Okay, so let's take a look at what the components look like on the panel on an actual system. So this is a typical BBSS panel. You can see as a standard, we mount everything on a 304 stainless steel plate. All of the valves and all of the components are clearly labeled with uh, laser etch phenolic tagging. There's a full set of operating instructions on the front of the panel and you can see we label all of the sample in out, all the components are clearly labeled and that's a standard for sensor sampling system. So here is the sample valve for the operator, single handle operation. This piece is called the shroud and that's what contains the bottle during the sampling operation. If I remove the shroud, here's my process needle and my vent needle. Turn this around so you can see it from the back. Behind the panel, here's that sampling valve. So again, sample in, sample out, continuous flow through. When you open the valve, then you're passing down through the process needle into the bottle. So let's take a minute to talk about that sensor needle purge again. So here is the nitrogen connection. We've got an isolation valve here so you can shut the nitrogen off regulator, we typically recommend you regulate down to about five PSI nitrogen pressure. We've got a gauge on the side of that regulator so you can see it. And the needle purge passes first through a rotometer before passing into the valve. And some might ask, well, why are we measuring the flow of nitrogen? We want to provide an extra measure of safety to guarantee that the needle has not been plugged. So if the nitrogen is on and you have nitrogen pressure, but there is no flow through the rotometer. What happens to a rotometer when there is no flow? The ball indicator drops to the bottom. So one of the first things that we have on the operating instructions here is to observe nitrogen flow when we want to see about a half SCFH. If there is no flow through the rotometer, it says stop the operation. It's not safe to take a sample because something is plugged 
in the system and it indicates to the operator that it is not safe to take a sample. So this rotometer is an extra measure of safety. One of the really important features about the BBSS is the ease with which you can replace the process needle. Probably the most common requirement for maintenance with a sampling system is the need to replace these process needles because over time the operators can, can bend them in the field and they'll need to be replaced or over a great deal of time that tip can become dull and there's a need to replace them. We designed our system so that the needles are easily replaced in the field without the need to replace the entire needle injector assembly. And in fact, you can even replace the needle with a larger process needle because we designed them so that all of the, what we call the barrel assembly in the back, those are all of a common diameter. So different diameters of process needle will all have a common barrel size and can be put in the same injector assembly. So here again is our sampling valve. I've got the, the vent needle removed for ease. You can see there are three hex head screws on what we call the retainer ring. So if you have to replace or desire to change the process needle, you simply remove those three screws. Then remove the retaining ring and now the needle can be removed, can be replaced, can be replaced with a larger diameter needle, easily reinstalled, retainer ring goes back on, very quick maintenance, very easy maintenance. So finally, I want to give you a look at a typical layout drawing. Our layout drawing will provide the dimensions of the panel and you'll see clearly laid out all of the components of the system that we design specifically for you or your customer. There are many, many options available for our systems. If the process is too hot for an operator to safely handle the sample, we can provide a cooler on the panel. If the process must be kept above a certain temperature in order for it to freely flow, we can provide the whole system inside a heated enclosure. Any of those options will be depicted on the layout drawing that we provide with every quote, along with a flow diagram like the one I showed you earlier. Every system is designed custom per the requirements of the sampling process and based on input from our customers. Application data sheets are available via our website those application data sheets will allow us to collect the information that we need to know to design a safe and reliable sample station uh, that meets your customers' sampling needs. So, thank you for watching the video about our basic bottle sampling system, and we look forward to working with you in solving sampling applications in the future. Thanks for watching.